Hello again everyone, it's been a long time since I last did a video but I'm starting up again now and I'm going to do a series of tips and tricks when using Video Studio Pro X7. This being part one. So the idea of these is to basically start you off um, with some simple things and then gradually build up to some more advanced things to help anyone who is struggling or wants to know more about Video Studio. So this part one is basically just going to be some simple things um, to make your projects look more professional and also to allow you to use the software a lot easier because some people do struggle so this is basically going to help you along when using the software. So like I say I'm going to start off with some simple things and gradually build up. So part one is essentially going to be a few bits and bobs from around the software um, just randomly selected by me. So I'll start off with folders which are these. You can see here I've got one called samples and one called clips. Samples is most likely going to be on everyone's software. That is essentially just a load of clips and images which come with the software. Clips I added myself and they're the clips which I've used in this timeline for this project. So folders are a brilliant idea for when you have lots and lots of different video clips from lots and lots of different topics. Um, so maybe you're doing a load of holiday videos and you've got holidays from four years ago, two years ago and this year's holiday. If you insert all of your images and your videos in the same place here in the same folder they're all going to get mixed up and you won't know whether you're coming or going. So folders are to keep everything together and neat and tidy. So add is where you add a new folder and this is going to be holiday 2012 just spell holiday right. So you can put all of your holiday 2012 shots in here and you will not get them mixed up with this year's holiday snaps. So you then add obviously another one for 2014 and this will keep all of your images, photos, music together. You won't get mixed up, it'll make it a lot easier to edit because you'll know exactly where all of your things are. So that was just one of the very simple ones and that was just to start you off. So that's the use of folders and it's a very good idea to do that before you do anything else in your project because it just makes it so much easier when editing. Next you'll notice that there are thumbnails and this is when you've in inserted your music, your images and your videos. Now say I had a large number of these and I wanted to delete them all. Obviously this isn't that many but if you had say 50 thumbnails and you wanted to get rid of 40 of them instead of having to click on each one individually then press delete and then yes for each one and keep going through them all you have to do is left click on one of them and then hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then click on the last one which you want to get rid of it will then select them all you can then press delete and then that will remove all the thumbnails that you want to so that is a quick way of removing thumbnails and decluttering your workspace. So again, that was just something very simple, but it does help when you are organizing your workspace. The next thing is using the sound mixer to check where sound is in your video clips. Now you may think, why would I want to do that? Well, this is the sound mixer here, and it will just load the wave data as you can see here. This loads a map of where all of your sound is can take a while especially if you've got HD videos but you can see, I'll just zoom in, you can see where there is sound. Now there's not a great deal of sound on this video clip so it's probably a bad one to choose but you can see where the line is solid there is no sound or very little sound. Where you see these bumps especially if there's a big bump that is where there is a lot of sound. Now again you'll be thinking why would I want to do this? Well the idea of this is so that you can edit either, sound, either side of that sound clip. So if, for example, you wanted to just take that sound clip out of here, what you would do is you go to the beginning of that sound bump on here, you press cut, and then you go to the end of it, you cut it again, and then you have taken that piece of sound out of your video, and now you can do what you want with it. So it may be useful to you, it may not be, I find that very useful, I actually use it all the time to see where sound is because then you can remove it if you don't want it in there or you can take it out 
and you can put another video over that existing sound. So it's up to you if you want to use that or not. I find it useful personally, but again, it's up to you and what the type of project is that you're doing. Okay, so we'll come out of the sound mixer and we're going to go on to a bit of text. So I've got a few things here with text. Um, text is very important in a project and it's very, very useful as well, especially if you're going to put some information or facts on your videos. Um, so yes, what I'm going to do is go to the beginning of my topic, my project. I'm going to go on the text and what I'm going to be doing here is just for a start inserting some simple text and this is going to be called holiday 2014 and what you want to do here is especially if you've got a lot of text to write you want to start off in a small simple font because if you have got it right up here and you've got loads to write um, maybe you're saying where you where you are um, so in the Greek Islands. You can see it's gone off the screen, it's really hard to see, and again, you cannot see what you're spelling. Um, so, yeah, make sure that you don't have a stupidly large text when typing, um, and make sure it's a simple text to begin with. Once you have written everything, then what you can do is you can change and select your font or your font type. You can also choose um, what the colour is going to be, whether you want it bold or not, and all of that. So again, just a simple thing. Make sure it's small when typing because it makes it so much easier to see what you're doing. Um, and don't start off in a great big font because it will just make your life harder and in the end it will make it a lot longer to edit. So yep, yeah, that's what you want to do here. You want to start off small, simple, and then you can go on to choose a better font and colour and all of that. Do all the formatting second, do what? Do all the writing first. It's the best thing to do, especially if you've got a paragraph to write on here. Now you probably won't have a paragraph, but if you do, that's what you want to do at this point. Okay, moving on again, you want to stay within the safe text areas. Now what that is, is this box here. If you keep your text within that box, you should always be able to keep your text on screen if playing back on a TV or something. Sometimes if you go outside this box and then you save it onto a DVD and you put it in a TV there is a chance that it will actually cut the side of your text off because of that aspect ratio on the television. So what you want to do is always stay within that safe zone and then you won't have to worry about half of your text being cut off. It will also keep your font central and it will look smarter in the long run anyway. So make sure you always stay within that safe zone. It's always a good idea to do that. Okay, next, don't use colours that blend into the topic. Now the reason for this is because it just makes it so much harder to read, especially if there's a lot to read. So what I mean by this is the same colour as the background. Like if you've got a back backdrop here, um, which doesn't have a shadow, it just makes it hard to read. If you had all of your text like that, you, it's just not. You just don't want to read it. It's just too much to you and when you're trying to watch a video it's just not what you want so always have a color which stands out or you can use that color if you want to but like it defaulted to with me make sure you have a shadow or a border on it because then at least it it stands out and it's not blending into the topic so make sure you've got something which stands out or if you're not going to have a border or a shadow make sure you do not have the same color as your background because it just doesn't look good and it makes it a lot harder to read. So that's another quick tip just make sure you use different colors and backgrounds and also shadows. Okay so if you're new to editing text then use a pre-made text style or format. What I mean by this is the things which have been flashing in front of your eyes for a while. So these are pre-made styles which you can drag into your existing project and all you have to do is edit them and all the animation is done for you. So here it is, all you have to do is left click on it and you can just change it to holiday 2014 or whatever you want it to be. You can then align it to center and that just keeps it smarter and then when you play it you'll notice that everything's been done for you. So you can see there's a motion blur on there, there is a bit of shade and all of that on there as well. So that has been done for you, all you have to do is edit that. 
and that is fantastic if you're new to editing or if you just want to do it quickly maybe it's not the best project you want to do in, you want to do in the world and you just want to put something on there quickly just to put a bit of information on um, they're fantastic things to do because they're quick and easy and the animation and also some other things are done for you if you go onto the attributes you see what these other things are and you can see that there is a zoom motion on there and there's also light and these are in the FX tab here and you can add other things as well you'll see there is a whole range of different things which you can add but they've just been put on for you because obviously these look quite good when you are showing your titles so now moving on from text what we're going to be doing is doing some copy and pasting and this is the shortcuts so copy and pasting nearly everyone knows how to do that but when you're using the keyboard shortcuts it speeds everything up so much and it's so much easier as well so if you wanted to copy this first clip and put it at the end as well you could right click on it and then press copy and then it would appear on the timeline and you can put it where you want you would left click where you want it and it will paste the other way of doing it is the keyboard shortcut you just left click on it press control and C and then just drop it there to me it's much easier if you're slow with keyboard shortcuts then maybe you would do want to just keep with the right click copy and then paste it in but it is a good habit to get into doing the keyboard shortcut of copy and paste so that is just another quick tip and I do find it useful when editing my videos so it's something else to bear in mind now when you're doing your videos try and avoid using plain backgrounds now if you have got a load of text um, which you want to show on your video then yes a plain background is what you want because it does not distract the viewer from reading that text which you've put on the screen however if it's just a tiny bit of text like I had at the beginning saying holiday 2014 then on a plain background it's not very exciting and it doesn't really make you want to watch the video so like here it's a holiday video I've put the C on there and I actually already enhanced that picture to make it look more tropical um, and it just makes you want to watch it more it just drags you in more it's a bit like a book the first chapter is so vital to make you keep reading you want to do the same with these videos if the beginning is boring why would you want to watch it it's just going to turn people away and it just does not make a good impression at the beginning so always try and have an exciting start even just a picture like I say just a picture instead of a plain background does help and it really does make it look more exciting so that's another thing that you want to do if you are doing some editing in Video Studio right the next tip is white balance nearly always you'll want to do white balance on a video or a photo because this will keep the white things white and everything else the right color shade so what you want to do is left click on the image or the video whatever it may be mine is an image you can see it here in the timeline press options color correction and then white balance now this will automatically detect what should be white in your photo or video however it's not always right or you might not want that thing to be the white object so what you do is pick color and then obviously the white thing on here is the clouds and you can see now that is the color which I've chosen that is the white and it has adjusted the photo or the video accordingly so white balance is a very good thing especially in the winter time and even when you're doing snow if you're doing snow it will tend to put a blue tinge or a tint onto your video or photo and you normally would want to get that off and you do that using the white balance function so that's very useful next is a bit of a pan and zoom this keeps photos more alive now there's nothing wrong with putting still photos on because you can see everything in that photo at once however if you want to keep your video moving especially if it's a slideshow you want to use the pan and zoom function and what this is is essentially allows your video to always keep moving so what you do here is you left click on your photo and then when you see here it says pan and zoom you tick that and then you'll see here there is a load of preset pan and zooms you can choose any of these and you can also customize it afterwards so I'm just going to choose this one and then when I press play you'll see that it's now a moving photo now you'll see that it's got these black margins on the left hand side 
and the reason for this is because it has not been set up for this specific photo. So I'm going to left click on it again, press customize and you'll see that it's got a start and a finish point. This is the start point and I'm going to drag that inside the photo. You'll see that it's got no border on this side. The same with the left side, I'm going to drag that to the right and try and keep it as level as possible and you'll now see there is no border. When I press OK and then play that back you'll see that it will not have a black border on the left and the right. So that just brings your photos live and is very useful especially for slideshows. So that's what you, what you want to be doing if doing a load of photos in your projects. And finally for this part is the export. When exporting you want to export in a format which suits you. If all of your videos have been taken in standard definition then you might as well export it in standard definition. There is no point taking up more space exporting it in HD because the truth is it's not going to improve the video quality it's just going to add a bigger file size to your computer and also if you're uploading and you've got slower internet it's just going to make it a lot longer uploading so if you've got an HD video export it in HD if you haven't there's no point there is no point exporting it in HD if it's not an HD video so just for this one I'm going to do an MPEG4 and you can see here this is where we choose it you can choose whether it's HD or a standard definition so just make sure that you do render it in the right quality so that is actually it for this part I hope you've enjoyed these tips if you want anything else then just suggest it in this video below um, and I'll get back to you on whether I can do it or not and also please stay tuned for part two because I will be doing one and also if anything in this video was something you didn't want to hear maybe it was too obvious or not were explained enough if you want me to explain further just comment below like I say and also like and subscribe Thanks very much for watching.